Hello everyone, I am Simone and welcome to my channel. Today I'd like to talk about the Roman settlements of Muziris and Arikamedu in South India. Historically, Roman Empire in India had maintained direct contacts for several centuries. These were more intense and frequent than we can imagine. The commercial relations between these two important centers of the ancient world were already known in the past. However, archaeological discoveries occurred in the southern east and west coast of the subcontinent suggest that the Roman presence in southern India was not limited only to commercial aspects, but there was much deeper. In fact, it seems that the settlements of Muziris and Arikamedu, located respectively in Kerala and Tamil Nadu, were not simply trade posts, but real settlements, with the presence of Roman soldiers stationing there and a temple dedicated to Augustus near Muziris, mentioned in an old Roman map. What is the truth behind all this? Did the Romans have more than a superficial economic influence in South India? Let's analyze it better in this video. Historically, Romans developed their trade connections with India on the basis of the Greek pre-existing ones, created between the 3rd and the 1st century BC with the starting point in Egypt, specifically on the ports on the Red Sea. However, the volume of Greek-Indian trade was not even comparable to that of the subsequent Roman routes. With the Roman conquest of Egypt in 30 BC, the ports on the Red Sea, specifically the ones of Arsino Eclisma, Berenice and Misos Hormos, passed into the Roman hands. The Romans, knowing the great opportunities deriving from trade with India, worked on its further development and increased its extension and volume. Much of the information we have on the trade relations between the Roman Empire and India are from the work called Periplus of the Eritrean Sea, written around the middle of the 1st century CE, and whose authorship is still debated. In the same, it is reported that in the years corresponding to the Roman conquest of Egypt, a navigator of Alexandria called Epalus studied the monsoons and the seasonal winds of the Indian Ocean. This allowed direct contact without intermediate stops between Egypt, then the Roman Empire, and India. This significantly increased the volume of trade. Roman trade posts in the subcontinent were not limited to Muziris and Arikamedu. However, these two were the most important ones, hosting also large communities of Roman merchants. The importance of these two settlements is connected to the goods produced and traded here. In fact, the Roman Empire mainly imported from India pepper, a fundamental condiment of ancient Roman cuisine, ivory, pearls, gems, cotton and animals used in the gladiator shows. On the other side, it seems the Indians were crazy about Campania wine, they loved the terracotta, the painted glass artifacts and the sculptures of the Hellenistic Roman tradition. During the given centuries, the Roman trade with the Tamil land and other parts of India was carried on. On such a large scale that, as stated by Pliny the Elder in his Naturalis Historia, there was no year in which India did not drain the Roman Empire of at least 50 millions of sesterces, sending in return wares which were sold for a hundred times their original value. Roman gold poured largely into the Tamil country in this period as attested by the numerous Roman coins which have been found buried in different parts of Tamil land. Again, Pliny the Elder described Muziris as one of the most active centers for trade with Rome. It seemed to be so important that two cohorts of Roman soldiers, equivalent to two battalions, used to be deployed here at its defense. Another document shows the presence of a temple dedicated to Augustus in the surroundings of this settlement. This document is called Tabula Piotengeriana and is an illustrated map of ancient Roman road networks. The version available today is however a 13th century copy of the Roman original, but the fact that this settlement is mentioned there suggests its importance. This hypothetical presence of Roman communities settled on the coast of Kerala and Tamil Nadu could be evidenced by archaeological excavations in these two settlements that unearthed finds including amphorae, pottery including ones produced in Tuscany and Roman Spain, painted glass and gold coins of Roman origin datable between the reigns of Augustus and Caracalla, which means between the 1st and the 3rd centuries AD. About 200 years of continuous commerce between Rome and India. As said, the discoveries unearthed seems to suggest that Roman influence wasn't limited only to the artifacts. Indeed, the ancient Tamil texts refer that the Yavanar, a term indicating Westerners, namely Greeks and Romans, were in great demand in India for their technical, artistic and military skills. In South India, artistically, one of the most evident examples of the Roman hand is the one of the Buddhist stupa of Amaravati in Andhra Pradesh. Here, the contribution of Roman sculptors or artists came from Rome is visible on some bas reliefs from the 3rd century CE, where are displayed several Roman items and artistic elements. 
The other aspect that I mentioned before involves the famous Roman military skills. Due to the high presence of pirates operating in the Indian Ocean and raiding the Indian coast, Roman soldiers were quite common on both the merchant ships coming from Egypt and in the settlements in the subcontinent where they were employed as defense garrisons. So, surely Tamil rulers knew the martial skills of the Roman soldiers. It is reported that the Pandyan king Nedun Gerian employed Roman soldiers in different locations. For example, at the guard of the fort in his capital Madurai. Moreover, it seems that he trusted them considerably, to the point of taking them with him during his military campaigns, placing some of them to guard his tent and even using them as personal bodyguards. The practice of using Yavanar as bodyguards appears to have been quite prevalent among Tamil rulers of early centuries of the current era. The Pandyan kings were the first to send an embassy to the Roman Empire. One Tamil ruler, of which we don't know the exact name, but can be the same Nedun Gerian, would have gone even further, trying to gain the friendship, if not the alliance with Rome. Nicolaus of Damascus describes that he met this embassy sent by the Indian king named Horus, or Pandion, Pandya or Pandita, at Antioch, near the present-day Antakya in Turkey, in 26 BC, on its way to Athens to meet the Roman Emperor Augustus. It is reported that embassies from India continued to arrive in the following centuries. However, with the progressive weakening of the Roman Empire and the appearance in the history of another important player, the Arabs, these Roman settlements in India disappeared completely. The rise of Arabs meant that direct trade relations between India and the Mediterranean would have been mediated by them for the next eight centuries or so.